the Atlantic hurricane season got off to a pretty swift start this year, and the Western Pacific sat back and said, uh, hold my drink here because, uh, oh boy, oh boy, we got several systems right now from Lupit to Marinate to Nita and also an unnamed tropical depression uh, over the Mariana Islands, bringing some showers out there too. But uh, the good news, and I mentioned this in my video earlier today, is that the fact that you have multiple systems here is actually kind of a good thing. And what I mean by that is the fact that uh, this is stretching out the energy between all three of these instead of uh, consolidating it, we have several systems that are not weak, but relatively weak. And that means that we're probably not going to be seeing a typhoon with any of these systems. So destructive winds, things like that, not in the forecast. Messy weather, uh, unfavorable conditions, breezy conditions, and for uh, Taiwan, even that problem of flooding in the forecast for sure. So let's break some of these down. First, the one I think is going to have the highest impacts on Japan, including the Olympics, and that is uh, Mirne. It is currently moving over uh, the Okinawan Islands, pulling away, bringing some breezy conditions out there towards the Daito Islands. But the good news, this is going to actually pull away. And based on a lot of the recent guidance, this actually could stay off of the Tokyo area. I think as we go ahead into Sunday, windy conditions there uh, on the back side of it, especially out towards Chiba in the Izu Peninsula. So my friends in Yokosuka, uh, you know, Zushi area. You're going to see windy conditions, but I think the bulk of the wet weather will stay just offshore. And that's very typical when we see these East Coast runners run up and just stay off of the uh, eastern seaboard here. That is from the ECMWF. This is the GFS guidance. Kind of giving you an idea of what I am talking about here with those different model ensembles keeping this just offshore. And when you get this type of pattern, especially with the shear that's in place, the bulk of the convection will stay on the right side. I've been in these situations. In fact, quick story time. When I was in the U.S. Navy, uh, I remember telling the captain of one of the ships they wanted the sortie in a very similar situation like this. They didn't listen to my forecast. All the ships went out there uh, just off the coast of Honshu. Some of them got beat up because they were in some 20 to 30 foot seas. While in Yokosuka, uh, it didn't rain at all. Winds were relatively mild. I think this is going to be a very similar situation. So if you got any military commanders watching this, don't panic, please. Uh, this is going to stay off the East Coast. Nothing you want to worry about all too much as this lifts off towards north and east. By the way, I got little sprinkles of the new graphics in here. This is one of them. There's our system moving towards north and east, just staying offshore. While I think the big issue back here is going to be that persistent rainfall, those winds wrapping around into Taiwan. In fact, Taiwan's going to be looking at uh, some areas as much as uh, four to 500 millimeters along the west coast. All that monsoonal flow pushing it across the southern Japanese islands. So still more rain on and off into Okinawa, but uh, you know nothing like we saw two weeks ago. While you take a look at the rain totals into Tokyo, that's only shown about 10 to 20 millimeters since the bulk of that precip will stay offshore. But I, like I mentioned, into uh, southeastern China, Fujian province, already been reports over 100 millimeters. Thank you very much, Lex at Western Pacific Weather for sharing a lot of information with me on this. I don't make these updates by myself, uh, by the way. I get some information from uh, plenty of sources, including you guys, and you share stuff to me on Facebook and Twitter. So thank you very much. I really appreciate that. But look at these totals out there in Taiwan. Uh, this is just going ahead over the course of the next five days. Just because that persistent flow, plus you have loop fit out here, totals could be as much as three to 500 millimeters. So flooding, problem with this one too. Not destructive winds in Taipei, but the mountains for sure will see that heavy rainfall with this overall monsoonal flow wrapping around with it. I like this graphic because it does show that uh, juxtaposition between the monsoonal flow and what we are seeing with those winds wrapping around. You can just see those swirls, right? That is that dry air that's pulling in out of Japan, out ahead of this. And then you start to see uh, kind of that moisture sweeping in behind it. And you just you get that that juxtaposition, like I said, a little swirl, these little eddies. There's our storm system here. There's our other one there, that minor tropical depression. We have um, Mirne right there, and then Lupit right there. Lupit, closer to that source of moisture out of the Indian Ocean, so I, that's one reason why that has that heavier precip with it, that bulk or moisture, while back towards the north, Nita is already interacting with the westerlies, and it kind of has that more dry air mixed in, too. Anyways, it, it, you see how I'm 
kind of jumping all over the place here because not one of these storms really jumps out to me as the destructive maker. If you've watched my videos for a long time, if we have a super typhoon, I'm going to stress it. Um, that's what the whole video is going to be about. And I will we'll just be like, eh, the other ones are there. But for this one, I think the big main point, flood threat in Taiwan for sure. Windy conditions there in Okinawa all really extended through the weekend. And not a big threat. I should say big threat. Yeah, let's go with bit threat. Uh, for Tokyo either. I like spelling. Hey, how about this photo out? It uh, looks like it's out of Kamakura Zushi. First it said Yokosuka here, but you can see out over the Sagami Wan. So I'm kind of interested where exactly Christy took this photo. Uh, I used to live out there in Kanagawa for a bit, so I, I know the area, right? Uh, this does look like it's up on the Izu Peninsula, looking out over the Sagami Wan at Mount Fuji. Beautiful photo, Christy. I saw a bunch of photos actually out of Kanagawa Prefecture, not just this one. But this is from Bill out there in Kawasaki. Uh, also used to live near here. This is Kawasaki. Used to river, live right across the, the river there uh, around Futaku Tamagawa, for those of you around the Tokyo area. Uh, yeah, that's a beautiful shot right there. Nice sunset there as well. Some of that serious outflow from those systems further towards the south, and it kind of comes together and makes a beautiful weather out there. Unfortunately, it comes with the tropical system eventually. All right, three-day outlooks across the Western Pacific. This is another graphic that is being trickled into here. I got a little teases for you guys with these new graphics. They're not fully implemented yet, but you see from Bangkok, temperatures into the 30s. Out towards Manila, thunder showers with those southwesterly winds. Well, into Taipei, of course, those showers. Rain at times there into Naha, and then, well, let's go through it one more time. Uh, then into Tokyo, we are going to be looking at those windy conditions. I guess not. Anyways, Tokyo, Sunday, windy conditions. Like I said, the graphics aren't fully together just yet. I'm not going to go back and re-record this as well. Anyways, this is another graphic Lex from the Westpac weather team put together. And I had somebody asking about this, especially with a lot of new people, you know, um, tracking our tropics out here in the Western Pacific. That's one nice thing about the Olympics uh, in multiple systems near Japan. A lot of people from all over the world have been asking legit questions. Why does the Philippines have a different name? Why is JMA calling it a severe tropical storm? This is actually their legit naming system. So does Pagasa. Actually, it's funny how JMA and Pagasa agree that they're severe tropical storms. They don't agree on the same names. But they also agree on calling, they don't agree on what a super typhoon is because JMA doesn't call stuff super typhoons. They call it a violent typhoon. While JDWC also uses the term super typhoon, uh, which is about a category four to a category five. Basically, if we say super typhoon or violent typhoon, it's a big storm. We don't have that with this one, any of these. We're going to stay on the tropical storm side. Maybe severe tropical storm, but I doubt it. Anyways, thank you very much, everybody, on Patreon. I have been giving you guys shout outs as much as I can without sounding patronizing or begging or anything like that. Uh, I really, really appreciate that, especially Super Typhoons. The new graphics, I'm going to have new uh, billboards, too. The, the really uh, thank you guys. The, you have been what is making these videos possible. Uh, it's not only the new graphics, but it's the motivation behind it. These videos take time. Uh, you know, they just I, I just got done with a 12-hour workday, and I'm coming in here and talking with you guys. One reason, I like doing it. I think it helps. So many people have said it helps. And, why not then? If I like doing it and it helps you guys, but also the money to keep all the equipment and the maintenance and the upgrades going, truly, truly helps. So thank you very much, everybody, on Patreon. I'll put a link down below if you guys uh, like it. If you've watched all this video all the way through and you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Please do. Uh, also, check out westernpacificweather.com. I, I don't maintain it as well as I should, but I've been trying. <laughs> I've been posting stuff there. If anything, short little bits. Uh, with these videos as well. It's just one more place you can go and get some weather information. The big thing about westernpacificweather.com, every single slide, every single graphic, every single uh, piece of information that I use in these videos is in the bottom of that page. It's like 100 links. It's, at, it's, it's a wealth of information. People have wrote me, ask, where do you get this information? Where do you get links? I just had uh, one of the chief people, weather people at Cadena write me, and they're like, where, where are you getting this information? All that stuff is there because anytime I find a new, cool, interesting link, I always put it there. It's kind of like my bookmark spot. So if you guys want to check that out, go ahead. Uh, you can also follow me on all these platforms. I even posted on TikTok today, a little video there as well. Anyways, um, a lot of talking, so I will, yeah, all right.
Stay safe out there.